Hello and welcome back to Olivia's Mindful Gardens and Plants. So today um, I am planting up some brassicas but I thought I would quickly show you the cover that we've put together. Um, pigeons, birds, they all love to eat um, the leaves, the young leaves of brassicas and further down the season they get even more um, desperate and they start to eat more and more of your brassicas. So that's broccoli, cabbage, um, tender stalks, all of those type of um, vegetables. So this that you see in front of you, the frame was from an old greenhouse. So one of those plastic greenhouses that you get. Um, so we had the frame and the plastic was um, ripped. So hence why we've only got the frame and not the plastic. So I have um, purchased some netting, which goes all the way around here lovely um, netting. Um, this one is really good because the birds can't get in either and butterflies can't get in as well so it's protecting from um, all birds and butterflies. Um, I've used um, cable ties in some places just to really keep it tight because you don't want the wind to then take away the netting so it's all tight all the way around with cable ties and then at the end is where we have the opening I've used these um, clips just to hold back the entrance here so we can get in and out and then I've got a stake at the end which we roll up um, in order to secure the entrance. Okay, here we are inside the um, cover. I have some Brussels sprouts to plant. So I did do some Brussels sprout seeds, but they're so weak um, that I really don't think they'll survive. So we've been to the shop and we bought some shop-bought um, Brussels sprouts. And this one is brilliant. F1. So um, this is obviously for a winter feast, um, hopefully at Christmas time uh, and beyond because they do last all the way through winter. The other things I have here are some green acre cabbages and if we have time I shall plant it along here so we'll have to remove the membrane and then plant that on this side. Also at the end here I have some pumpkins that I've grown from seed uh, and they desperately want to be planted out because they're very hungry pumpkins and I'm going to grow them outside the cage all the way along and they will just ramble um, wherever they want to outside. So let's see how much we can get done today. It is threatening rain on and off all day. So I've got lots to do. I will stop every so often just to show you how I'm getting on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes all the way along. And true to form, it has now started raining. So the next stage is to just fill these holes with some lovely soil. Um, so the miracle grow. Um, because this soil here, this is a plot we've inherited, um, is very, very stony. Lots of cooch grass, lots of bindweed. So this year is really just trying to see what we can grow. So it has stopped raining uh, and the sun's out again. So I have filled each little hole with a handful of compost. I've tried to take out as much of the cooch grass as I can, but it is a constant battle. Uh, and I have placed in the tiny little seedlings of Brussels sprouts. So you can imagine if I had planted these direct into the stony soil, which I could have done, um, it may have not established as well as doing it this way. So whilst you don't need much compost, it's really worth it. That's each seedling now in its individual little area. I've tried to create a small well where the new compost is versus the old compost and that's just purely to try and keep the watering to a um, targeted area so that the water just fills in this area here uh, and then you don't need to water obviously empty soil. So this is probably half a bag's worth all the way along uh, and that was quite generous I think. 
so I shall water these in really well and hopefully um, by November, December and January we should have plenty of Brussels sprouts. So they're all watered in now in their individual holes but I think we may put some bottles in each one. I'm just starting to get a bit worried of how much watering I have to do over the um, warmer periods. So anything to make my life easier um, is what I will do. Um, now the bottles that I'm going to put in are just normal mineral water bottles. Um, sometimes people do leave the cap on and then drill small holes in the cap so that the water takes it time getting down to the roots which is fine that's a great way of doing it I just felt that mine were getting clogged up very easily the small holes so that's why I've decided to not put holes at the bottom of each bottle cap just leave them without the cap I've placed all the bottles that I had I only had four with me today just towards the edge of each of the seedlings. Uh, I've watered them all in really well from above just to get them all settled in. I'd advise at the beginning to just water into the hole and that's purely because the roots will slowly start to edge out and then once that happens and they've grown a little bit taller, water with the bottles. Um, and that will um, save you a lot of time and effort with watering. Another good thing that I've done today is to actually leave the label very close to the actual seedlings um, so that I definitely won't forget what type of Brussels sprouts um, these along here are. So it is a brilliant F1. Outside now we've got the holes ready. Um, I've got three pumpkins, put soil in and then put the pumpkins in pretty much the same as the Brussels sprouts. So that's one, two, three pumpkins all in a row. I think these are the Lantera pumpkins, each one with their individual growing area. What I have seen a lot uh, at my allotment is that some um, allotmenteers do place plastic pots. So the big pots that you get um, from the garden centre that you buy your plants in, they will just cut the bottom out and place the ring all the way around. And I think that helps um, stop the weeds growing outwards from their growing holes. Um, if I have any pots at home of a good size, I might actually try that. Um, if any of you have done that before in the past, and it's worked for you please do let me know um, and I will definitely be giving it a go. So just a quick review of everything we've um, been doing here this morning at the allotment. I have planted all the brassicas um, or the Brussels sprouts here on a row. I've not had time to do the cabbage, green acre cabbage, um, which I do want to do all the way along here so that may have to wait for tomorrow which is a bank holiday and um, we have also placed the pumpkins outside the cage and just a quick revisit of the tomato project uh, on this bed so you recall we put some cardboard stable manure and then some compost all under this sheet and then we've made the holes, we've done the bottles, we've placed the tomatoes in uh, and the sticks as well, so the stakes um, which will um, support the tomatoes. So that's all the way along. So we are still watering these a little bit from above um, and that is only, or not above onto the leaves, but just onto the bare soil because they're still very young and they might not get the water from the bottle. So something to be aware of. Um, the other thing we decided to do is to use grow bags. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison to see which ones do better, although these tomatoes were grown um, by a relative, so they're a different type to these tomatoes here. Um, but it'll be interesting to see which ones do better. The ones that have more soil uh, and grown in this type of environment 
and the ones grown in the bags. So there you go. That's uh, all we've got time for today at the allotment. It's time to go home now. Uh, I probably will be doing some projects at home shortly and of course I will continue to do updates from the allotment and small projects as we go through the season. I really hope you've enjoyed um, today's visit to the allotment. Please please do subscribe so that um, I can um, upload, continue to upload videos um, to those that love to uh, watch. Take care now. Bye.